Nearly a thousand Apple employees are resisting the company's return to work plans. They signed a petition against coming into the office three days a week. A group of workers that calls itself Apple Together circulated the petition and it says they're more productive and much happier working at home. Business leaders overwhelmingly say the office is here to stay. The firm JL surveyed people who make their company's real estate decisions. 72 percent, nearly three out of four, said offices will remain central to their businesses. Christian Ulbricht is JL's global chief executive. Christian's with me now. Sir, it is good to have you. Um, so this idea that the office is all over bar the shouting, we now realise is not, is not true that people will still have to get to work. and though, But there is a difference in composition. Companies' demands for the sort of office, the location, and the amount of space is changing. What trend is that? Well, what we have learned is that people can do their work also from home if it's just desk work. But if they come to the office, the reason is predominantly to collaborate, to innovate, to experience the culture, and just to be with their colleagues. And in order to do so, we need a different type of space. It has to be much more a collaborative space. It has to be much more a we space rather than a me space where you're sitting in a separate office. And then from a location point of view, they like to have the office space convenient to transportation hubs. And, and those right. things are becoming much more relevant than before. But in terms of building, the building that took place in 2019, 18, 17, 18, 19, that's now being filled up. There, was t there were reports, London, New York, Tokyo, uh, that vast areas of new builds would not get uh, tenants. Has that proven to be the case or not? Well, what we're currently seeing is that the most modern office buildings, uh, the most greenest buildings who are really delivering also on the ESG, expectations of employees are filled up quite easily. The ones who are suffering are kind of the Me Too office buildings, what we would call the B space, buildings where you have many, many of the same in a city which are not standing out at all. They are struggling and they will going to struggle going forward. We led our program tonight on California's decision today that it will ban gas, gas, gas cars by 2035. Now, the interesting thing here is you're another, you're, you're another aspect of it. All the buildings you have now have to take a much greater component of ESG sustainability than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something which is relevant for all of us and it is relevant for the employees. And, and we, when we survey employees and when our clients survey employees, this is becoming an important aspect. There are differences depending where you ask that question, but it is all over in Europe and it is becoming more and more important in, in major parts of the US. And, and, and then you have regulation. And New York has one of the toughest regulations in the world with regards to the carbon footprint of buildings. And so we will see that becoming a really relevant factor going forward. Do people... I always get a bit cynical when people talk, you know, when, when, when I, I'm told employees are demanding an environmentally sensitive building. Employees are this or consumers demand that. Is there evidence from your customers, your clients, that they are prioritizing environmental and ESG, even if that costs them more? Not across the board, but we have uh, a large group of companies within our portfolio who are prioritizing it very clearly. Uh, our 50s largest clients, more than 90% have signed up to go to carbon neutrality uh, along the lines of the Paris Climate Agreement or some of them even much faster. And they are clearly prioritizing for right. any new space, those buildings which deliver on ESG. Finally, I just want to just briefly talk Hong Kong and China, which, of course, is just I mean, China's property market, ha the, the rules for people in China's property market have changed dramatically with one COVID policy. And I'm wondering if there's any decent business to be done there at the moment. 
Well, it is obviously still tough while we st had a lot of lockdowns during the course of this year, but it's coming back now. People are eager to come back into the office and, and I guess no surprise after being locked at home for so long. And so our offices are filling up, the offices of our clients are filling up. But clearly the Chinese economy is taking this year a stronger hit from COVID than we would have expected at the beginning of the year. Christian, I'm very grateful you joined us tonight. Thank you very much, sir.